Hey everybody, and welcome to Coffee Tip Wednesday. Uh, this Wednesday, we're gonna talk everything, uh, the great debate of batch brew versus pour over and everything you need to know there. And as always, uh, we bring these videos to you every Wednesday so that you can help create uh, cafe quality coffee at home, uh, one little step at a time. So let's get into another great debate. Uh, which is better, batch brew or the pour over? Now, if you know anything about uh, specialty coffee, you might be saying, oh, it's gonna be the pour over. The pour over's always gonna be a better cup. It's gonna be the, a better coffee. It's just higher quality coffee, which isn't always true. And sometimes you might actually get a better coffee out of the batch brew than you might with the pour over. So let's talk about why that might be. So with the pour over, um, and here I have, um, I have a V60. So this is kind of your uh, standard pour over device. Uh, what makes this device great is the cone shape. So having a cone shape helps gives us even what we call slurry temperature from top to bottom, which helps gives us a more even extraction. Uh, you can also see the grooves inside of there, which kind of helps to flow the water and give us a swirl, swirl and a uh, good, uh, good uh, extraction all the way through. So there's a lot of great things about the V60 if you know what you're doing. Um, and then this here is of course my Shimano coffee cup. Gotta have that if you love bikes, right? Um, and then, although maybe not, maybe if you love SRAM more, maybe you need a SRAM coffee mug. I might have to talk to my friends and see if I can get one of those. And then of course, uh, the tried and true Hario scale. So this thing has traveled the world with me. Um, really, it's been really uh, robust and maybe I should do another video on scales and what are great scales because this thing has just been a champion and I can't recommend this thing enough especially for the price point. Um, so let's talk about uh, the benefits of a pour over. So if you are going to take the time and if you haven't yet I have a video I'll link it here so you can see it on my uh, 1 to 15 brewing method and that will really give you a good uh, way to kind of control your V60 and make a really amazing pour over. And it will also help us to do, to reduce what I consider the biggest um, issue with pour over and that's the variables. So there, are, because it's 100% manual, the variables are just, we have everything's variable. So we have our water temperature is variable, our water pour speed is manual, our flow rate is is uh, I guess that's kind of the same as the pour speed, is variable. Um, the amount of grounds we put in is one variable. The time between pours is one variable. How long we blue, bloom the coffee is variable. So because it's 100% manual, everything is a variable. So if we're looking to create a consistent cup time and time again, um, like you would in a cafe experience, sometimes for me, if I go to a cafe, um, and I notice that they're doing pour overs, I'll kind of watch the barista that's doing it. And then I, that may determine whether I get a batch brew or if I get a pour over. Because some, I have had in some cases a batch brew, well, in a lot of cases, I've had a batch brew that tastes way better than a pour over, just because of the number of variables and in a busy cafe setting, it can be hard to keep consistency every time. And so sometimes in a, you know, when they're really busy, it's, it's not the barista's fault. They're trying to do a million things, but with a pour over, you really have to slow down and take the time. Now, as somebody who loves espresso, and I think one of my favorite parts of espresso is the art of espresso. So that's the making. Uh, I enjoy the process of going through and making espresso every day, uh, the art of kind of controlling it, and I use a full manual machine because I just, I like that process. So for me, the process of making espresso is as fun as the enjoyment of drinking it. So um, I'm going to do a complete home uh, espresso masterclass. So I'm working on that now. So uh, definitely be in the looks for that. Um, so back to if you enjoy the art of making coffee, um, that is another, that's a benefit to the V60 is that you, have, you can take the time to actually create the cup that you want, the flavors that you want, enhance the coffee in a certain way. Um, if you look at the video, again, it's linked above, the one to 15 brewing method, it will talk, it kind of walks you through how you can really kind of control the flavors and 
uh, create a cup of coffee that will accentuate the tasting notes in that coffee and where it's from. But again, I feel that uh, the V60, while it has a lot of great benefits and the pour over has a lot of great benefits, if you're not going to take the time to be consistent with it or to really kind of produce the cup that you're looking for, there's a lot of downsides. Um, and so I think that's where the batch group comes in. So if you go to get a good batch brewer, and this is just a Bonavita batch brewer here. Um, so the great thing about the Bonavita is that it has a good uh, shower head. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to show you this. Um, but if you can kind of see there, uh, the number, it's kind of dark so you can't see, but it has a really, the water spouts are kind of really spread all over the uh, top here. So what's important about that is that uh, we get a better even extraction. So if you look at like an old cheap coffee brewer, uh, you will notice that you know it's got one or two spouts up top, which is just gonna give us some channeling in the coffee and it's not gonna be that great. However, this thing is also not terribly expensive. I think it's like a hundred bucks. Um, and it also comes with a thermos. So uh, this is an insulated thermos to keep the coffee warm so you don't have to drink it all at once. Um, the only thing I hate about um, the specialty coffee industry is that one cup is considered five ounces and not eight ounces. So if you get a three cup Chemex, it's 15 ounces of coffee. Uh, here you can see they even have it designated one cup equals five ounces. I don't know why that is. I should probably research to find out why the specialty coffee industry does five ounces as one cup. There's gotta be like a, uh, a metric, which I wish America just used the metric system from you know milliliters to uh, ounces. And, and I think that's gotta be, that's my guess. I, I'm not entirely sure, but that's my guess. However, the great thing about this brewer also is that if you, when you turn it on, if you press and hold this button for five or 10 seconds, it will flash, the light flashes, and then it tells you that it will do it in bloom mode. So it will actually do it shorter, uh, it will do essentially bloom the coffee. So it'll uh, spray the water um, and then it'll allow the coffee to bloom. So what's great about the batch brew is that if you, the water's consistent, so the, um, it's always the same amount of water assuming you're measuring it out correctly. Uh, and even sometimes if I want to even get more technical, I'll actually use the weight of the coffee. So I'll do it to the gram of water um, in here. So my water volume is the amount of water is the same. I can, the amount of coffee is the same, which we can do uh, on the V60 as well. Two variables that are easy to control. The total amount of water, as well as the amount of coffee, easy to control. But what's more important is the water temperature will always be the same. The water flow rate will always be the same. And the time that that water takes to brew that uh, entire volume will also be the same. So really the only thing we have to worry about is dialing in our grind size. So how thick is our grind? And then think about how much actual coffee we want to produce through the volume and through the amount of the actual volume of water and the amount of grounds. But everything else will be the same. So all we have to do is control those three variables, which are really easy to control, and we will produce the same cup every time. Now I know that a lot of you, if you're into specialty coffee, you might say, yeah, but you know, like coffee changes as the weather changes, and yeah, so we may have to change our grind slightly, but for the most part. It's kind of set it and forget it, and you will get an amazing coffee experience every time. I have used this thing more times than I can count, and it actually creates a really great cup of coffee. Now, back to the cafe side of things, and why a lot of times I will go with a batch brew over a pour over in a cafe, is again, just because I know that, especially if it's a busy cafe in the heart of a metropolitan city, I know that that cafe has got a recipe dialed for whatever coffee they're brewing in that batch brewer. And that batch brewer is a machine and it is going to do the water the exact same, the temperature the same, the brew time the same, everything's going to be the same. And so it, knowing that they have taken the time to dial it in, that barista can be insanely busy and that coffee that I'm gonna get out of that batch brewer is still going to be great. Where, again, uh, not, and again, not a fault of the barista, 
but if you're in a really insanely busy uh, cafe, it's going to be hard to keep the same pour over consistency to give you the same quality of cup. And unfortunately, I've had some really terrible pour overs that have either been overly extracted or under extracted or um, there's just, the, the list goes on. So there's just so many variables that go into the V60 versus the batch brew. And while batch brew seems to get a, kind of a bad rap, like you can't, oh, you're not gonna, it's not specialty coffee, it's batch brew. I think that's 100% wrong. I think sometimes you get a better cup of coffee with batch brew than you do with V60. So again, just to wrap this up, let's talk about uh, the pros and cons of each. The pros of the batch brewer is going to be a set it and forget it, amazing cup of coffee every time. Um, the, the downside of that is, is it's harder to um, kind of manipulate the coffee to accentuate a specific coffee, coffee that you got. So say you got a really beautiful Kenyan from your favorite local roaster and you want to really bring out the acidity and the brightness uh, and the, the citrus notes in that coffee, you're still going to get a good cup of coffee, but it's going to be brewed the same way as if you brewed it brewed a Colombian or whatever other coffee you have. So we're limited on how we can kind of interact the coffee to make it sing and dance. Um, where the V60, a lot more variables, harder to keep consistent. However, if we have the time at home, um, you know, we can take the time to really create a really beautiful cup and a coffee that we can enjoy and we'll kind of speak to the region or we can brew it uh, based specific to our liking maybe that day we want something that's a little heavier a little um how would i say you know uh, we want to kind of make it stronger we want to make it lighter we want to make it cleaner we want to make it brighter we can do all these things with a v60 and there's a lot of great ways to do that so again um that's kind of uh, the great b debate between batch brew and v60 so really the point was is that Pour over gets all the rage, but I think that batch brew still has its place and still does some great things. And actually one final point that just dawned on me with batch brew. Sometimes batch brew is the greatest thing if you love specialty coffee and you're like most people, you have to get up early, go to work and you don't have 10 or 15 minutes to make a really great pour over. You can have a great coffee experience. Uh, I said it, forget it. One thing that I will do is um, if I know I'm going to be leaving really early and I don't have time, I load the hopper of my grinder so uh, here's a hand grinder. So what I would do is I would load, load the hopper with the amount of coffee I'm going to brew in the morning. Um, I set my grind. So this is already done. I take a paper filter, I fold it and load it into here. I take and load the volume of water uh, that I'm going to need in the brewer. So the only thing I have to do in the morning is grind the coffee, rinse the filter, start the machine. That's it. Now it's going to brew, so I can walk away, I can go brush my teeth, do whatever else I want. The machine's going to brew, and when I come down, I'm having an amazing cup of coffee. So it's, uh, again, another benefit to a uh, good, especially if you have a decent batch brewer. And like I said, I think this one's like 100 bucks, and it's a really great uh, batch brewing machine. So that's it for uh, Coffee Tip Wednesdays. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got something out of it, please share it with your friends and let them know, because that helps us grow the channel. Uh, if you haven't already, click the little subscribe button and there's a little notification bell. Click on that just so you get notif notified for every Coffee Tip Wednesday video. And as always, coffee, pedal, repeat.